the Los Angeles Rams. 10 and 6, second in the division, made it to the second round of the playoffs and lost. Recently traded away their quarterback, Jared Goff, who took them to the second round of the playoffs and substituted him for Matthew Stafford with high hopes. Yep. So their expectation for the 2021 season is what? Matthew Stafford finally gets his respect. This is a big move. You know, they sent Goff out the door. Huge haul to bring Goff in to pick him number one overall. Um, They get to the Super Bowl, say that he's not the guy. Goff really struggles, comes in with a broken finger, wins a game. So it's it's really, really confused about Jared Goff here. You know, eliminating the Seahawks. What is he truly capable of? You know, they make the move for Matt Stafford, who has been an underachiever for the most part in his career. I mean, let's be real. You know, no playoff wins. I think a couple of playoff appearances, maybe one. I mean, maybe let's let's be real about it. There's there's been nothing in Detroit. It's been terrible coaching. Um, I mean, short of Calvin. I mean, you know, who have you really had? And so he's got a lot of pressure on him. He's got a defense. He's got an offensive line. He's got an elite coach. He's got elite players. He's got a receiving core. He's got a running back who's looking to emerge. Two of them, actually. So he's going to have the pressure on him, and he's looking to get his respect, which I think he will. Then you've got Tutu Atwell as well, who they picked. A guy who's 5'9 and runs a 4'3'2". And crazy enough, this guy has over 120 passer rating when he's targeted in man coverage. No drops whatsoever, so he's immediately going to serve dividends for Matthew Stafford out there. And then, like I mentioned before we got on, we're talking about the size and speed of Kyle Pitts. Jacob Harris out of UCF, 6'5 and a 4'3'9 40-yard dash. As a tight end, you're talking about a guy who could potentially get into the slot, Tutu Atwell as well, being on some end arounds, you know, getting real schemey with him. We see the wide receivers, how they play in today's game. And then also, they're going to look for someone to take that RB1 role, bringing in Cam Akers out of FSU last year. He emerged for them. You know, you had Daryl Henderson kind of had questions with Todd Gurley while he was there. They were kind of dealing with a rough transition, you know, going from a big pick early on in the draft. Um, Offensive rookie, offensive player of the year, you know, on his resume. And then having to replace a, uh, excuse me, a big running back. And now we're going to look at the reality of the LA Rams. I expect this about a 10 and 7 team because they, they've got a tough schedule looking at it. I have them splitting the division. Oddly enough, the NFC West is so competitive, but people get so familiar with the coaches and players that I think everybody in the division will split. Maybe you'll have some two and fours or some four and twos, but overall, very good feeling that the whole division will split with each other. And like I said, all the pressure's on Matt Stafford. So I smell a huge 5,000 yard season coming from Matt Stafford. He's got five decent guys that he could throw to I me. Mean, we're thinking about Deshaun Jackson. Robert Woods, Cooper Cup. They just brought in Tutu Atwell. We're forgetting about Van Jefferson from last year, who was really wowing folks when he got his time as well. Um, And I think that Atwell is going to be able to get a minimal role because there are a lot of veterans in that receiving room. You know, Robert Woods as well. Forget about Bobby Trees over there. He can definitely perform. And they've got, like I said, a lot of veterans that have been with LA for a while. Um, And then you take a look. I think Cam Akers is going to be the RB1 this year. I think he busts out of the gates, fully takes advantage. Uh, Sean McVay finally lets him loose and says, okay, go be our RB1. Go get us uh, maybe a 1,100 yard season. But then you got Daryl Henderson right behind him, who I think would be a great running back too. So overall, I think the biggest takeaway from this team this year, what every Rams fan's thinking about, is hopefully we got to upgrade a talented quarterback who can't perform off script and who is very athletic. So I do have the Rams at 10 and 7. Um, it's going to be tough to win it over San Francisco because they're a team that's got more recent success, more recent experience, feels like. And the NFC West has had a good bit of success trying to run through it and, you know, division improving every year. But um, I think I'm going to have the Niners coming in second in this division. But I do have the Rams finishing at 10-7. and seven. Okay, I guess that's a precursor to where you got them. The, the Rams' expectations are a 12-5 and five season, first in the division, either a second round, like a divisional playoff or NFC championship game run right. with Matt Stafford. I mean, they, they made it to the divisional round last year. They're expecting for it to be an improvement. So I think it would be a failure to have brought him in and given up what they gave up in order to bring him in and not at least make it to the NFC championship game. So, I mean, their, their expectation is to both win the division and at the very least make it to the NFC championship game. A reality for the L.A. Rams – Matthew Stafford and Sean McVay are overrated and they will be exposed. They now lo- no longer have any excuse. They were giving Jared Goff all the blame for every inconsistency that the team had and saying that Sean McVay couldn't run the offenses and that he wasn't able to execute what he was actually putting in front of him, which I think is a farce. Sean McVay is a good coach. He's not as good as he's being billed up to be. Uh, also, just like just to piggyback off your point, I know you said you thought Stafford went to the playoff once. He made it to the playoff three times. He's 0-3. Lost first round every time. Ouch. 
Yeah, they never won the division. He made it and lost in a wild card every time, being blown out completely twice. He only had a close game against the Cowboys. That is the only playoff win that the Cowboys have in quite some time. Yep. So, I mean, that that's really not a testament to the success or whatever it is that we're giving to Matthew Stafford. He's not that good. But let's look at the division and who they play. They got the AFC South. That's Tennessee, Indy, Houston, Jacksonville. I got them going 3-1 and one against that division because that division isn't that good. I think the only, only game they lose in that division is possibly to Tennessee. Right. If it's not Tennessee, it'll be Indy. One of those two teams will beat them. They'll beat the other three. NFC North, I got them splitting two and two. That's Green Bay, Chicago, Minnesota, Detroit. They won't beat all of them. I think they'll, they'll go two and two, split in that division. Their other three games they get for being second place in the division, they got the Giants, the Ravens, and the Bucks. I think they'll lose to the Ravens, and they'll lose to Tampa Bay. They'll go one and two in their three finishing games based off their placement. And in the division, San Fran two times, Seattle two times, Arizona two times. I got them going two and four. I don't think they fare well in the division. These teams know Sean McVay. They know his systems. They do. Matt Stafford, regardless of what you think he is and all the yards he put up, he put up a lot of yards because Matt Stafford is definitely accustomed to really trying to gunsling and trying to win games for his team when he is now going to be on a team that he actually could be a game manager, but that is not in his DNA. And he's going to lose them games oftentimes that they could have won because he's doing too much. So I've got them ultimately finishing at eight and nine. Mm. They'll be sub 500. The Matthew Stafford project will definitely have coach McVay under fire. Someone's going to be trying to figure out what the problem is. It's going to be bad and it will crash in their face. Mm. 